uh, start out by challenging the assumption that Bob Mueller made uh, in what you just read. Um, because he is relying on Office of Legal Counsel opinion in saying that it would be unconstitutional to charge a sitting president. Now that is not written in the Constitution, so when he says it's unconstitutional, it's not as if you can point to a provision that says, thou shalt not indict a sitting president. Uh, it's not even a court ruling. It is the opinion of a lawyer who happened at one point in time to work for the Office of Legal Counsel, uh, or a few lawyers over time. It was no surprise that Bob Mueller would choose to follow the OLC opinion, uh, both because he is effectively a contract attorney for the Department of Justice, where he was until yesterday, but also he's an institutionalist. He was not going to make new ground. And everything about what he said yesterday shows just what an institutionalist he is, and I don't mean that in a pejorative sense, uh, and just how conservative he, is, conservative he is, because what he said is that the OLC opinion doesn't allow him to indict the president. Uh, and if you follow the logic of that, and I think he's absolutely right about this, if you can't indict a sitting president because it would cast a stigma over the office that the president would be powerless to remove until years later when they left office, it does follow that you can also not say that but for the OLC opinion you would have indicted the president because then you're casting the same stigma over the office. Not a surprise what Bob Mueller did. Um, but he likewise would not opine on whether Congress should impeach. In fact, he didn't even use the word. Uh, he said it is effectively left to Congress. The constitutional mechanism leaves it to Congress. Now, whether that should be done as an impeachment or whether it should be done through congressional oversight, he would not speculate. Um, and that is the dilemma that we're confronting right now. And I think it all comes down to this. Um, the president's conduct, in my view, is completely incompatible with fitness for office uh, across many different levels. Um, if we fail to impeach the president, what does that say about whether a president's conduct uh, like this um, is compatible with the office? Um, clearly, you can see his reluctance. Uh, in fact, I think part of the reason he made the statements publicly that he did yesterday uh, was in the hope that that would be a substitute for congressional testimony. That if he completely refused to speak publicly, that the public would not sit for that, but maybe this would be a, uh, an ample or sufficient substitute. I don't think it is. Um, I can see... I can see why he'd be reluctant. Uh, he's been nothing but attacked uh, for the last two years, and if he is forced to speak publicly uh, and critically about what he has seen, uh, he will get more abuse. Uh, but he has, I think, one last service to provide to the country, and that is to answer the questions of the Congress and the American people. Before we embark on something of this seriousness, I think the question is, is this the right thing for the country? Um, and I, I'm, I'm not there yet, uh, although the president seems to be doing everything in his power to get me there. Uh, I, I am not a good enough prognosticator or political scientist to know which way this cuts um, politically. You know, there is a good argument to be made that if you don't impeach, then the progressive base is demoralized and it doesn't turn out. Uh, there's a good argument to be made if you do impeach and he's acquitted and claims total exoneration that the progressive base is demoralized and doesn't turn out. Um, there is an equal argument to be made about the, the conservative base. Um, so I don't know the answer to it. Uh, and, you know, over time I've had even senior, senior Republicans will say in hushed tones, keep doing what you're doing. Um, but I'm frankly, exhausted by the private misgivings. Uh, people need to speak out. Uh, and I, I respect what Justin Amash has done. Um, one of the last uh, substantive conversations I had with John McCain before the midterms, I asked him, why isn't there a single Republican member in the House of Representatives who is in the constituency to be the John McCain in the House. I would think that would be a good place for any number of my 
GOP, GOP colleagues to be. And his answer was, well, if it stays that way, they'll soon be calling you chairman. Um, and tragically, it has stayed that way. Have you seen examples of congressional overreach in the conduct, conduct of oversight? Well, you know, when you look into congressional overreach, guy, you know, under the guise of oversight in the dictionary, you see Trey Gowdy's picture and Benghazi. Um, and so it's quite rich to see, you know, people like uh, Mr. Gowdy opining about proper congressional investigation. That was an abuse by design. Uh, as Kevin McCarthy said at the time, we set this up to take down Hillary's poll numbers. In terms of the current Congress, um, doing oversight of the Russian government's interference in our affairs um, is not only appropriate, but absolutely vital. Uh, and this, I think, was message number one from Bob Mueller. Doing the oversight of the president's interference with the administration of justice is essential to our democracy. Doing oversight over whether the administration is giving security clearances to people that the intelligence agencies are saying are a danger to have possession of classified information is absolutely essential. Doing oversight of why we are separating kids from their parents and kids are dying is absolutely essential. Uh, doing oversight of whether the President of the United States uh, is enriching himself um, through foreign powers and violations of the a monuments clause is absolutely essential in a democracy. You know, we learned some time ago that the president was instructing um, cabinet people to interfere uh, in the merger of the parent of CNN uh, at the Justice Department because he doesn't like CNN. We learned that the president was having secret meetings with the Postmaster General to browbeat the Postmaster into raising postal rates on Amazon because he doesn't like the Washington Post. If these allegations are true, it means the president is not only rhetorically bashing the press, but he's using the instruments of state power to punish and censor the press. That ought to be overseen, that ought to be investigated. So McConnell indicated that were he given that opportunity by this president within a short time frame before the election, he'd move that nomination and appointment forward. The, the, is there any check on the Senate President's authority to just do that, that you can possibly imagine? Uh, there's, you know, there's no check except for voting the bums out. Yeah. Which is not a check during the last year and a half. It won't be a check during the next year and a half, although, um, you know, voter activism in the run-up to the next election, um, that puts those senators on notice that they will be held to account uh, at the ballot box. Uh, can have an influence uh, on those marginal uh, members of the Senate. But the failure to seat Merrick Garland and the blatantly hypocritical position that uh, the Senate leader is taking now, that um, we think the voters should have a voice when it's a Democratic president <laughs> making the nomination, but not when it's a Republican one. Uh, there's only one response uh, to that, uh, and that's at the ballot box. I will say this, though. Um, I was an early supporter of Barack Obama, and I'm very proud of, of having been one. Uh, and I think he was uh, um, an astonishing president. Uh, I, I, do think, I do think the most serious mistake of his presidency was not fighting until the end to seat Merrick Garland. Uh, I, I think that we need to take a lesson from the tenacity of the GOP in this. I think had we fought a tooth and nail to seek Merrick Garland, that Merrick Garland would have been seated. Um, I can't imagine a circumstance where a Democratic Senate withheld a Republican nomination for over a year uh, without uh, succumbing to the hell that would have been wrought. So I, I think the failure to fight harder and to fight to success on that will have very long time, term uh, and disastrous consequences. It doesn't in any way excuse uh, the terrible uh, disservice to the country that Mitch McConnell did and continues to do. Um, but we do have responsibility uh, as well uh, to fight tenaciously um, in support of a good cause, and the seating of Merrick Garland was a very good